This becomes a key point, though. If you could ever get the Senate, this will right away beg the question of the Governor General because you're going to have a situation in which it's really the Senate, which is one hope, saying, no, no, you're not having a national daycare program. That's in provincial jurisdiction. Right we'll handle it just fine. We kind of like our patchwork of programs the way it is. We call it a quilt of programs yeah. across the country. You know, they'll think provincially. House of Commons will continue to think centrally, oh, well, why don't we just run it all from the federal treasury? It's so much more efficient. So you need somebody in the middle that's going to say, no, this is a provincial right. You're messing in a provincial right. Or they're going to say, no, well, it was a provincial right, but maybe it's time to move on. Like this governor general you're talking about, will actually have some power. Not infinite power, but significant. We don't really have power at all. It's funny, it's a very, it's like, it's a very, well, it's, it's hard to explain, you know. But he's, got, he's responsible to ensure that the government respects the Constitution, the constitution of Canada. Yeah, that's that the The government respects job. its own law. Right. And that the government acts in the interest of the people. Now, these, right. are, these are elements, okay, that all of us, all of us Canadians want. We all want a government respectful of the law, obeying the Constitution, working in the interest of the people. So right. in this sense, you know, uh, this is outside the, the realm of political conflict, you might say, of political opinion. We're, I think we're all agreed on that. We want a government to work on our behalf, uh, with our authority, legitimately. Yeah, and, and one that, and here's where you always hit the ambivalence of Canadians is that on the one hand we want our local rights respected, you know, our local priorities and so on. On the other hand, I don't know about here in Quebec, but certainly in the West and I think in Ontario and probably the Atlantic and possibly here, um, you always have this sense that, well, in addition to our local interests, there is this sort of national interest, this national reality that has sure. to be served. For sure. And, and so how you go about doing that becomes very much a matter of judgment and discretion and sometimes local interest. You know, in the Atlantic they have one interest, in Alberta we have another. And uh, sometimes they're in direct collision quite often. Well, not supposed to be at all in collision. The way the system was set up is the provinces, uh, the provinces uh, have the authority to act exactly up to the point where the federal government has the authority to act. So no, there's this there's no right. conflict. If the provinces have diverse interests, okay, then they limit the federal government not to intrude in those interests, so that every province has a, the, the right to do its own thing in its own affairs. Yeah, but the trouble that you get into, like that's, I think they call that watertight compartments federalism, and personally I'm all for it. You know, if it's education of, of any sort, it's provincial, and if it's defense, it's national. But the trouble you get into, and I think we all know this now, is that as the grasp of government on our lives becomes greater and greater all the time, well, then the question comes up, is Kyoto really regulating to regulate resource development, or is Kyoto really to sort of save Mother Earth from climate change? And if it's that, if it's the latter, well, then it's probably national. But if it's, the, you know, if it's really the former, it's like gun control. You know, the province is all set on gun control. Hey, it's a federal intrusion into our right to regulate property as provinces. That's our right, not theirs. And the courts looked at it and said, oh, well, Ottawa says it's about controlling crime, so it's about controlling crime, and that's the end of that, because that's federal. And, uh, and so you end up in these, I'm, I don't think these are avoidable dis, you know, uh, problems. They, they are, no, they're, 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 that's they're, your point, I guess, is that's why problems. you need this system. These are natural problems that arise in a federation of yeah. provinces. And yeah. uh, uh, like I said, the system is there to conciliate these interests, to find uh, a compromise. Okay, that would suit everyone. That's what the objective is. Right. Now, we can't imagine today what that compromise would be, for example, with Kyoto, or, with, or in, in the fire mar uh, firearms uh, department. Uh, maybe there would be no compromise at all. Uh, maybe, you know, the province would, you know, sit on their, their, in, their, in their Senate and say, there's just no way you're going to get involved in this area. But, uh, you know, Canada's recognized, uh, recognized and I was reputed to be able to uh, you know, come up with these compromises that were good for everyone, and that's what the objective yeah, is. Yeah, we never did fight a civil war. You know? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we, you know, we're used to compromising, uh, and, <clears throat> and I think in, in Alberta, Alberta, we're, <laughs> we're I think in Alberta, the the complaint is we're too used to it. Like in our in our <laughs> end of the country, a compromise means you they win, we lose. Yeah, that's what it always means. And now, I, perhaps you could argue, and maybe you do that. Well, how could it be any worse than what you've got? 
you know, if we were to go this way, it could only be better than what you've got, because as it stands, like we mentioned just now, Kyoto and gun control, in both cases, Quebec wanted them. In both cases, Alberta did not want them, particularly. In both cases, they happened, you know, like they were just imposed. So what would we lose by trying something else? You know, maybe they wouldn't be administered so badly or imposed so thoroughly or something. Well, generally speaking, uh, you know, if people admit or govern the, the way they want, and that's what the system, that's the, the ultimate result of the system, is you have government that is responsible to act according to the well-understood wishes and interests of the people. If you have government, okay, that's uh, under the control of the people again, well, you know, I don't see how that can be bad. Because the bottom line is, the bottom, bottom line, underlying uh, doctrine of the British Constitution is, that you'll have good government if they act according to the wishes and interests of the people because the people want an efficient government uh, working in harmony with the people to provide a civil society and a, and a good environment. If the people are able to get what they want through government, well, you're going to have a, you know, an efficient and harmonious system. And happy people. Happy people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>